Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I want to say good morning to everyone. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. And it says we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I'm glad this morning. I'm glad that God gave me another opportunity to stand up and say, I love you, Lord. Amen. He gave me another opportunity to say, Father, forgive me, for I have come short of your glory. Yes. Amen. But we're so grateful. Amen. That God and his gracious uh, mercy and grace has shined on us this morning as well as on you. Amen. We want to welcome you all. Uh, those who are viewing us in Facebook land, we want to welcome you uh, into our morning worship service. Amen. This is the first Sunday in a new month. Amen. God has been so gracious to allow us to come all the way to the month of June. Amen. And Amen. And so we're grateful. Uh, this is the day we have set aside, as always, uh, to honor our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ for what he has done for us. And so we just want to go ahead uh, and get started with our service. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so as always, as always, uh, we always like to start by uh, blessing you with a song. Amen. And so we're going to ask, amen, Evangelist Marilyn Van Buren if she would come along with our musicians. Amen. To bless you with a song on this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord. Glory, 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 Jesus. How many of you today got storms in your life? Amen. Hallelujah. I heard. Uh, one of the pastors said, if you haven't just wait on it, amen. It's coming, amen. Thank God for God who's able to take us through, amen, whatever we've got to go through. Oh, oh, oh. 
Jesus in the chorus that seems so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor that keeps me steadfast, unmovable, despite the time. But if the storm, if they don't cease, then just in case the wind. that you are our God, you are our Lord, and you are our Savior. Father, we pray right now, Lord, and ask as always that you please forgive us. Forgive us as a people, forgive us as a nation, forgive us as a country. Father, because we know we have come short of your glory. But Father, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us. Your word says that if we would ask, it says that you are faithful and you are just to forgive us. And so, Father, we come this morning, Lord, for no shape, no form, and no fashion. But we come, Father, to hear from on high. We come, Father, to honor your son, Jesus the Christ, and his sacrifice for us. 
we come this morning to say we are appreciative to be adopted into the family. Father, I pray right now, Lord, and always that you will begin to look within the hearts and minds of your people. And I always ask, Father, that you first look within me, your vessel. Father, if you find anything, Lord, that's contrary to your word, Father, I ask that you will remove it right now, please. Father, I ask, Lord, as always, I don't want them to see me finch. But I want them to see your son, Jesus the Christ, lifted in all of his glory and his honor. Father, I pray for the hearts of your people. Father, make our hearts a fertile ground. Make it a good ground, Lord. So that when the seed of this word fall in that ground, Father, it will take root. Father, it will spring forth a harvest that's able to be picked. And then, Father, when it's all said and done, Father, we'll be careful to give you the praise, we'll give you the honor, and we'll give you the glory. And as always, the preacher's praise is, that may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let all the saints of God say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. amen, amen. That's one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for his precious Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We want to first, as always, give him the honor because he is the head of the church. Amen. Then we give honor, amen, to our co-laborers who are here. Amen. The Minister Vonnie Ellipsy. Amen. Elder Evangelist Janice Diamond. Amen. Evangelist Marilyn Van Buren. Amen. Amen. We give honor to our First Lady, Sister Melissa. We honor our deacons who are here. Amen. We honor our musicians. Amen. Amen. Honor and thank God for our secretary as well. Amen. Amen. And then we give honor to you, my brothers and my sisters in, uh, in Facebook land. Amen. We just pray that God will continue to bless you. Amen. 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 Our saying here at this church is that uh, the only debt that you should pay is love. Amen. And that's our motto here is that we're going to let love be our only debt. Because the Bible says, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth one another has fulfilled the law. Amen. 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 I want to call your attention to the gospel according to St. Luke. Uh, the gospel according to Dr. Luke would be in the 10th chapter. Amen. And I'm going to read a few verses. I'm, I'm going to read uh, a few verses. But what's going to happen is I'm, I'm probably going to do a two-part on this. Uh, amen. So I do uh, part one uh, on today, uh, and, and then I'll conclude with part two uh, when I'm speaking again. Amen. 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 But the the total scriptures will come from Luke the tenth chapter, and I begin reading at verse twenty five. Amen. Luke ten, begin at verse twenty five, and twenty five reads, "And behold, a certain lawyer." stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Yeah. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him 
and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Yes, Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Amen. And I want to use for a subject on this morning. Amen. Why does America keep overlooking me? Why does America keep overlooking me? Me. Mm. Glory God. Give us a word, Lord. We know that on May the 25th of this year, 2020, we and America as a whole observed the tragic, the horrific, and the horrendous death of our brother George Floyd. At the hands of a man who was charged with upholding the law with equal justice and fairness. But yet, we watched him along with his three accomplices murder our brother by placing a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And even after seeing such an evil and such a racist act, some in our country, mm. even after seeing such an evil and racist act, some in our state, yeah. even after seeing such an evil and racist act, some on our jobs, yeah. even after seeing such an evil and hatred act, some who we consider to be our friends, yeah. say that he must have done something to deserve that. Wow. He probably was resisting mm. the police mm. and he got what he deserved. Oh my God. No. You got a mayor in the city of Pella yeah. who says if he can say he can't breathe, mm. then he's breathing. After watching this man with his knee on his neck for eight minutes Jesus. and 46 seconds. Mm -hmm. You got a Madison County prosecutor who makes a statement that she hopes the coronavirus spreads throughout the protesters. Okay. Knowing that this virus has already killed over 108,000 citizens of this United States and almost 400,000 worldwide. But she hopes, her prayer is, that the virus would spread throughout the protesters. Yeah. You got a man in the White House who's supposed to be the president of all the people calling protesters thugs. And as I said on Wednesday night, and he himself is the chief thug. He himself is the presidential thug. Yeah, you got a, a quarterback from the New Orleans Saints who, who inadvertently steps in it and makes a terrible statement. And after listening to his friend, after listening to the people whom he offended, 
after hearing from the folks he hurt, yeah. he had enough empathy in his heart to apologize. Yeah. But you got the chief thug in the White House that says he shouldn't have apologized. You got his own former defense secretary that says this about the president, that he doesn't even pretend to try to unite us. He, he don't even fake the funk. He don't even put on a show that he's trying to bring us together as a United States. He says he doesn't even pretend to try to unite us, but what he does is divide us. This is from his own. You, you don't hear it from us, but you ought to hear it from your own. He said that this man is an immature leader. He's been immature his whole presidency. Hmm. Amen. Amen. And then, and then, he had the audacity to, to use the police to forcefully use rubber bullets and tear gas on peaceful protesters to move them out the way so he could walk to a church that wasn't open so that he could take a Bible that he couldn't even hold correctly in his hand to take a picture symbolizing that he believes what he's holding in his hand. And I don't know about you, and I, I really don't know if he knows what the Bible itself says about a person like that. The Bible says you are a hypocrite if you saying one thing and doing another. And I know he's not the only hypocrite who holds a Bible. Amen. We know we got folks in churches all over this country who hold Bibles and are hypocrites as well. But he's the only one president and he should know better. So, 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 my question this morning is why does America keep overlooking me? Why doesn't my life matter? Because my skin tone is black and yours may be white. Why can I have the same rights and justice that the Constitution says I have as a citizen of these United States of America? Why is racism a bigger pandemic and threat to my life than the coronavirus is? Why? I'm asking questions this morning. Why should I live in fear for my sons? Why should I live in fear for my grandsons? Why should I live in fear for my uncles and, and for my cousins and for my church members and for my co-workers? And why should I live in fear that they may lose their life because of racism in this country? Many, many would say, well, well, well. Preacher, the church is not the place to be talking about racism and this type of issue. But, but, but I mind you that what the late great Dr. Martin Luther King says. Dr. King says that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And the same people that say I shouldn't talk about that in the church are the same people in the NFL that had a problem with Kaepernick taking a knee yes, to protest the very thing that we all saw on May the 25th. Yes, right. But that was not the place either. So where is the place to say that my life matters? Where is the place to say that my wife and my sister, my brother, their lives matter? You tell me where is the place? Dr. King says, we ought to let freedom reign. He said, we ought to let freedom reign from the snow-capped rockets of the Colorado. He said, we ought to let freedom reign from the curvaceous slopes of California. 
He said, we ought to let freedom reign from the stone mountain of Georgia. We ought to let freedom reign from Lookout Mountain, Tennessee. He said, we ought to let freedom reign from every hill and molehill in Mississippi. From every mountain, let freedom reign. And I come to say this morning, I'm on my little mole here here in Mississippi yeah, yeah, yeah. to say let freedom ring for Brother George Floyd. Yeah. Let freedom ring for Breonna Taylor. Let freedom ring for Trayvon Martin. Let freedom ring for Victor White. Yeah. Let freedom ring for the black community. I'm going on, I'm going on. I asked the question this morning, which I think is a very important question. Why does America keep overlooking me? Amen. Keep overlooking us? Why? But in this story here, because I know that's what people want to hear. They want to hear the word. They don't want to hear what I'm saying. Well. But the word says in this story, in this parable of the Good Samaritan, there were two questions which were relevant and supreme to the very time Amen. that we're living in. Amen. First question was, how do I inherit eternal life? That's it. And the second question was, who is my neighbor? Yeah. And so we want to deal with the first question today in part two, we'll talk about who is my neighbor. The Bible says here in verse 25, we know this is recorded by the great physician, Dr. Luke, a companion of Paul, amen, a, 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 a scholar, a, a physician, one who was particular and, and manipulous and, and getting all the details and facts out. He wanted you to know every aspect about the life of Jesus the Christ. He wanted you to have a first-hand event. Even though you wasn't physically there, he wanted to paint a picture so pretty that you would understand and you could feel Jesus. And so, in this story, we have a certain lawyer. Come on. Come on. Hey, amen. And the Bible says that this lawyer stood to tempt Jesus. Oh, my, my. In other words, the lawyer in this story is representative of the United States of America. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The lawyer in this story represents the country that we live in. Yeah. And I want you to know something about this lawyer. The Bible says he was an expert in religious law. Mm -hmm. He was a Jew. He was an expert. So in other words, he was familiar with the law. He had vast knowledge of the law. He knew what justice should be. He knew what equality should be. And so him trying to tempt Jesus and asking a question about him and how does he inherit eternal life? The fact of the matter is the lawyer was not seeking the truth. Amen. The lawyer in asking his question was not looking for the true path to eternal life. But he stood in arrogance. He stood tempting Jesus. He stood feeling like he was better than everybody else. He stood feeling like he knew the way and he was only going to try to play with Jesus. And so it was seen that the facts are in America that America does not want the truth as well. well America that wants the truth about racism. Man. America that wants the truth about police brutality. Yeah. America isn't interested in finding the truth about injustice because if America was, yes, then there would be no need for protest. If America was, insisting on finding the truth, then the man in the office of the most greatest office in the world would not say that you need to dominate the protesters. Oh my God. Yeah, if America was really seeking the truth, then there would be no need for marches. If America was really seeking the truth, there would be no need for peaceful protest. Man. If America was seeking the truth, yes, sir. the march has been going on for over 70 years here in America. Yeah. And America still does not want to accept the truth. Amen. Truth is what the lawyer should have been seeking. Truth on how we attain eternal life. 
he should have been seeking truth on how Christ solidified our salvation. And America should be seeking that same truth. Yes. We should be seeking the truth on how to dominate racism, not dominate protesters. Yes. We should be seeking the truth on, 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 on how we call injustice injustice. Amen. But if we don't call racism racism, then how are we seeking the truth? If we don't call police brutality police brutality, how are we seeking the truth? If we don't call injustice and disproportionate by the black community, then how are we seeking the truth? There's a statement that says, this is a statement, I didn't say it, but this is what the statement says. The statement says that the definition of stupid is knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing the lies. The definition of stupid, I ain't calling nobody stupid, but the definition says, stupid is seeing the truth, knowing the truth, but believing the lies. Propagated the black lives don't matter. That's a lie. Black lives do matter. And if you try to avoid the truth by saying that black lives don't matter, but all lives matter. If you try to avoid the truth by saying blue lives matter, then I would have you know that black lives is a part of all lives. Yeah. I would have you know that black lives are part of blue yeah. lives. How you know? Because I'm a black life. Amen. I'm in all life and I'm in the blue life. And I'm still a black life. Yeah. So my life matters. Our community is disproportionately affected by racism. Yes, yeah. it is. Bias. And that's just the truth, America. The fact of the matter is, if you didn't know, Jesus died for black lives too. So, 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 so. If we as Americans want to attain eternal life, then we must do as Jesus did. We must do as Jesus said. And what did Jesus say? Well, what did he say? Verse 26 here, after the lawyer asked the question, Master, how do I inherit eternal life? What did Jesus say to him? Jesus said, what is written in the law? How do you read the law? So in other words, Jesus answers the lawyer's question by asking him a question. What does the law say, sir? In other words, what does my word say? The man standing here holding the Bible in front of the church. What does that say? about eternal life. Jesus said, don't ask me a question trying to tempt me. You holding it in your hand. What does it say about eternal life? This lawyer, this lawyer, when Jesus asked him the question because he was so pious, because he was so religious, because he was such a scholar, they would carry little boxes, little black boxes uh, called phylacteries, and, and in these little boxes they would carry scriptures. And so when Jesus asked him, what does the word say? He quickly went into his little box and pulled out some scripture. And the particular two that he pulled out was Deuteronomy 6 and 5 and Leviticus 19 and 18, which was quoted. Amen. The answer to eternal life has been given to us. It's been given to us in the word of God. It's been given to us in black and white. It's been given to us undeniably so you can read it with your own eyes you don't have to listen to what somebody stands on the tv who does not open a bible tells you what a good life is and what god says matters to him you can read it for yourself because jesus put it in black and white and read it it's undeniable that's one way we know too we know the answer to your long life, eternal life has been given to us by the life of Christ himself. That's right. 
God allowed him to come down and demonstrate what eternal life is, what eternal life looks like, what eternal life sounds like, what eternal life does for his fellow man. He demonstrated it in Jesus Christ in the flesh. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and love among us. The word became flesh and had compassion among us. The word became flesh and had mercy on us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you want to know how to have eternal life in America, then you must hear. You must read and you must do as Jesus the Christ did. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Amen. What did the man answer? He went in his box, pulled out his scriptures, and he read them. What did he say? Verse 27 says, Well, this is the answer to your question, Master Jesus. <laughs> thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mm. with all thy soul, with all thy strength. With all thy mind. And he went as far as to say, And thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, oh isn't it something how we can say one thing, yes. but we do another thing? Oh, isn't it something how we can read what it says, but does the opposite of what it says? Yeah. And so, 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 if the lawyer is representative of America in this parable, yes. then America. If you love God with all your heart, then why does America keep overlooking me? Amen. America, if you love God with all your soul, then why does America keep overlooking me? Amen. America, if you love God with all your strength, then America, why do you keep looking over me? Amen. America, if you love God, with all your mind, then why does America keep looking over me? John said it like this. I'm going, I'm going to leave you alone. John said it like this. First John, he said, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. John said, if a man take the Bible and say that I love God, but I hate you because of your skin, I hate you because of where you live, I hate you because of the month your plan, I hate you. Then John said, he is a liar. And that's what's going on. Oh, I know I'm upsetting some folks. You got the truth up. But it's in the word. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad, get mad at John. Then don't get mad at John. John said he's the revelator. He said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Don't get mad at the messenger. If you don't like the message, change your heart. He said, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? Oh and this commandment yes, have we from him, from God, yes, that he who loveth God yes. loves his brother also. You got to. That's a command. Mm -hmm. My God. Ooh, in the New Testament. Lord, I, mean, <laughs> I, know I love God. <laughs> but I don't like you. Ooh. I love God. Uh, but I hate you. I hate uh, what you stand for. Uh, I love God. Come on, Pastor. But black lives is just a terrorist group. No. I love God. No. Jesus. Help and, us, Lord. and then and then and then the lawyer. The lawyer goes on to say, not only that he must love God, that he must also love his neighbor. Mm. That's a mm. <laughs> As himself. Yeah. So from the law that he read was the instructions that he must not only love God with all of his being. But that he must love his neighbor also. Amen. Amen. See, so 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 the first commandment to love God is abstract. Yeah. 
It cannot be seen or understood standing by itself. There has to be a demonstration. There has to be an act something done for love to be seen and understood. A profession of love without demonstration is empty. Just like faith without works is dead. Love is active. It's an active experience. Amen. It's inaccurate and foolish for a man to say, I love God, and then be inactive and dormant and doing nothing for God. Oh, my God. Verse 28. I'm almost to my point, y'all. Don't stop. Verse 28 says, this is what he said unto him. Jesus said unto him, lawyer, thou hast answered right. That's the right answer. You answered the question correctly, which further lets me know that you know the truth. But the definition of stupid is knowing the truth, <laughs> seeing the truth, <laughs> but believing the lie that we protest in the flag, believing the lie that we say all lies don't matter, believing the lies of the adversary. Oh my God. He said, You answered the question correctly. Now you must do it. Oh, he said, this do and you shall live. Yes. So in other words, if you want to have eternal life, if you want to see Jesus the Christ, then you must do what you said you read. Right. The lawyer answered the question correctly because the answer came directly from the law. Yeah. It came directly from the word of God. In America, the answer is in the law. The answer is in the word. It's in the word of God. But we got our own laws that thou shalt not murder. You can't murder a man in broad daylight with the world watching with your knee on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. That's in the law of the land. But you did it. Yes, sir. You did it. And you got people saying, if he can say he can't breathe, he breathing. Oh, Lord. Man. Jesus told the lawyer in order to live eternally that he must do just what he read. We must love God supremely and we must love our neighbors as ourselves. Yes. And so America, if we want to live beyond the United States, My God. if we want to live beyond this old wreckage world, on, then here. we must love all people as oh. God loves all people. If America wants to live eternally, then America must stop looking over me. If America wants to live eternally, then America must end racism. If America wants to live eternally, then America must seek the truth and the knowledge of Jesus the Christ yes, sir. and embrace it. Yes, sir. My God. Jesus said, I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father. But by me. Lord God. Amen. And so the lawyer stood up with the right question at the right time to the right person. And after answering correctly, because he was not seeking the truth, because he felt like he was better than everybody around him, oh my God. because he felt he was more qualified for heaven than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Then he proceeded to go on and say in verse 29, but willing to justify himself, who he is my neighbor. Yeah. And so I'm going to leave it there because part two will tell us who the my neighbor, neighbor is. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But, but the lawyer wanted to justify himself yeah. by saying who is my neighbor. Uh -huh. And so as I go to my seat this morning, I, 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 I think amen that the question which was asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life was the right question yeah. at the right time yeah. to the right person. But now, America, now I need to ask you another question. It's not what shall you do to inherit eternal life. The question is, do you want eternal life? Yeah. Because if you want eternal life, then your heart must change, America. If you want eternal life, then you must realize that all lives really do matter if you want eternal life, America, then you must realize that Jesus went up a hill called Calvary with a rugged cross on his back, not just for your community, but for my community as well. Folks protesting all over this world, from Germany, from London, from Paris, from New Zealand, it's time for a change, America. 
Jesus died on a hill called Calvary. Yes, 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 yes. With nails in his hands and in his feet. Thank with you. a thorny crown on his head. Thank you, Lord. He looked to his father and said, Father, forgive America, for they know not what they do. Forgive America, for they don't know that killing these little black boys and black girls, they're killing me. Forgive America, for they know not what they do. One race of people should not have to worry about their children leaving the house. Oh my God. Jesus said, Father, yeah. it is finished. Amen. He said, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And y'all know the story. He gave up the ghost. Amen. And the Bible says, they took him down, put him in a borrowed tomb. My God. Amen. A borrowed tomb. Because the tomb couldn't hold him. Amen. He only needed it for a temporary place of rest. Because it was going to be Friday night, he was going to reside in the tomb. <laughs> It was going to be Saturday, and Saturday night he was going to reside in the tomb. Yeah. But the Bible says that it was early yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. I said it was early yeah. Sunday morning. He got up out of that grave huh, with all power in his hand. And that all power means I got power to love white America. I got power to love black America. I got power to love Asian America. I got power to love Hispanic America. Even though they come from across the border, I still love them. I died for them. Why? Why? Does America keep overlooking me? My life matters. It matters to my wife. My life matters to my children. Yeah. My life matters to my mother. Yeah. My life matters to my church family. Yes, yes. My life matters. And yes. just as my life matters to them, their lives matter to me. Yeah. So America, please stop overlooking me. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Please stop overlooking me. Amen. Stop overlooking my brothers. Yeah. Stop overlooking my sisters. Oh my God. Love me the same way. That's right. If I'm a professional athlete, love me and scream for me the same way when I'm scoring a touchdown. That's when I take my uniform off and get in my car to drive home. Love me the same way. Amen. Amen. And as always, we want to give you an opportunity that if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know how to inherit eternal life, the lawyer answered the question, we must love God Amen. with everything within us. And not only must we love him with everything within us, we must love his creation right. with everything right. within us. Jesus said, you've read right. Now do this and you shall live. Amen. America, we're not going to stay in the United States of America forever. There's a better home. Come on in. There's a better place. And if you want to go where Jesus is, you must love his people. You can't hate me here and love me in glory. You must love me here to see me in glory. your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And the apostle Paul says, you shall be saved.